Okay, thanks to everyone for coming down for the last panel of the day. <laughs> this is the big one. Um, on our panel today, we've got Duncan Fagredo. Here, round of applause. Mark Laming. <laughs> and Christian Wild Goose. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna get around to talking about what they're doing, what they've done, what they've got coming out when they stop talking amongst themselves. Um, he. Uh, what? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Talking about you, Tony. Okay, yeah. mate. Yeah. Okay. The first question. Um, you're all talented artists. I'm being nice. The. Um, why comics? So why do you choose comics as a medium? Uh, do you want to start, Christian, at all? Or? Uh, I like to draw, yeah. Yeah, but uh, I like story. I guess that's probably most comic artists like to tell a story with pictures, really. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's quite like that. And me, myself, I like draw, doing the planning of it, because you do a lot of like, concept design and stuff like that, which is something I've always wanted to do for like film. Right, okay. So, uh, I, quite, I really like planning and, yeah, just that kind of stuff, really. Like cool. design. Okay, mate. Yeah. yeah. Nice warm-up one, Mark. Um, <laughs> I suppose I've always liked comics as long as I can remember. So it was that or having to get a proper job. So I went for comics instead. <laughs> <laughs> and then got a proper job and then went back to comics. <laughs> You're the comeback kid. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> Duncan? Um... Pretty much the same as Mark. I always liked comics. I read all the usual British um, things like uh, The Dandy, Beano, Wizard and Chips, all the good stuff. Okay. And discovered Marvel Comics, wanted to draw for Marvel Comics, and then wanted to draw for Disney, wanted to be a spaceman somewhere in there as well. Yeah, I still but do. That's the only thing I've not done yet, but I don't think it's very likely to be an asthmatic. But <laughs> uh, yeah, always drew, so. Cool. Well, that's interesting because it draws me to the next question on my list is where, what influences you when you started artistically and what influences you now? What are they and have they changed? Um, what, influenced, what influenced me mostly when I was a kid, I was sick a lot of the time with asthma. I mean, there weren't the drugs there are now. Um, so I think like a lot of sick kids, I just sat around drawing all the time. Do you want me a bit closer yeah, to the mic? Yeah, please, mate. Yeah, Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so... That's what I did. That's how I amused myself. I wasn't interested in sport or anything. So that makes you look pretty dysfunctional at school. All your right. mates are looking very popular being good at sports. So what could I do? I could draw. Yeah. And that made me a bit more popular. Just not quite as popular as I would have liked for the girls. As you are now, obviously. Yeah. It's yeah. fantastic <laughs> now. <laughs> Just as well I don't wear my Spider-Man costume anymore, is it? Because that <laughs> tends to put them off. So yeah, I did creative stuff. That's, and it was good. It was an outlet, you know. What sort of artists back then were you looked to when you started? Um, I would draw, mostly I'd be copying out of comics. So it could have been anything really. I mean, I remember um, I drew a lot of Disney characters for a while, I seem to remember. Um, I even won a, a bedtime storybook while I was at Butlins once, ah. when I was about eight. Because I was ill. I spent a lot of time in the chalet drawing. So <laughs> Mark spends a lot of time in chalets, funny enough. Yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> Same reason. <coughs> no. 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 <laughs> no. snoring. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Mark? What sort of artists influenced you growing up? Who you copied early on, almost? Um, growing up, probably Richard Scarry. Right. All those Richard Scarry books with all the animals. I drew those over and over and over again until I was about 30, and then, no. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and then I suppose it was Marvel Comics, really. Right. Um, with the advent of Sp Spider-Man Weekly. What were you doing, copying panels? Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, making my own ones as well. I never made my own. Um, I'd do pin-up books, I wouldn't do sequential. Yeah. Because that would be hard. Would you draw backgrounds? Yes. See, I never drew backgrounds. <laughs> um, Any particular artist you can think of comes to mind? John Romita. Right. Chaykin. Right, okay. From when he did the Star Wars um, thing. He hates Ooh, that work. I love it. But that first issue of that Star Wars comic is still one of the best looking comics I've ever seen. It should have been his inks all the way through. It should have been his inks all the way through. And he'd kill you if you said that to him as well. No? <laughs> he probably would kill you, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah. 
What about uh, you, Chris? What about um, influences for you? Uh, I think when I was young, I used to like. I used to really like Robo Hunter. Is it Robo Hunter? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big yeah. 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 influence on me. Yeah, I love yeah. his stuff because he just did that. Like he did Shine on metal, like yeah. nobody else. It was beautiful stuff. And, and like he drew re- really cute girls. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. He yeah, did was... one of my favourite dreads as well. I really liked his dread. Yeah, yeah. So I used to redraw a lot of his stuff. I remember getting in trouble with one of my friends when I was really young because we were like we're going to draw a comic and stuff and like you I'd never, I've never actually drawn properly a comic before and this is, this is probably the reason why because a friend was going to write a comic for me and I was going to draw it and I just traced over loads of stuff from 2000 AD and showed it to him and people was, still do that it's fine <laughs> I've finished exactly that people but still he was, do that now he was really hurt that I'd traced this character and right. like done it as my own <laughs> and then we never did anything ever again. <laughs> and then when I was older, I guess, like Dave Gibbons, like Watchmen, I think everyone kind of got re-fired from Watchmen when they were younger. And then, yeah, I just wanted to try and draw like Dave Gibbons and then couldn't, okay. so I just did my own stuff. What about now? Who do you look to now? Start with you, Chris, uh, again. Uh, you know, look, I, I always refer back to two artists who are always using on my desk is... Um, Cameron Stewart is always one okay. on there, and Sarah Pichelli as well. Oh, okay. I just love their kind of style. And I guess if you looked at my work, you'd probably see that I'd kind of draw a fair bit like that. Yeah, no, I, I see guess. that. Yeah, definitely see yeah, that in yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about you, Mark? Who's, who are you looking to these days to better yourself against? Or um, There's always Stuart Immonen because he is just ridiculously good. Chris Samney, who is ridiculously yeah. good. Mm. He is. Yeah, yeah. horrible. You wait till you see Black Widow number one. It's phenomenal. Um, seriously, it's, it's possibly a masterclass in storytelling. It's amazing. Um, and then lots of old guys. Gil Kane, especially. I love Gil Kane's work. Yeah. Alex Toth, I love his work. Um, Mobius, I love all of his stuff, especially the Blueberry work. Um, there's just almost too much. Yeah, what about you, Duncan? Um, yeah, a lot of the same guys as um, as Mark there. Um, I'm always looking at Mike Mignola stuff for obvious reasons. <laughs> yeah. Try not to look at it the same way. I mean, the hardest thing about looking at his stuff all the time was try not to be too much like him. Right, OK. Um, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, I'm not... Uh, hmm, who else? I, I mean, I used to... Again, yeah, Ian Gibson. I used to look at his stuff a lot. Love, love the body language of, with his characters, and he had a fairly unique way of telling the story. He had some interesting ideas about um, how panels are laid out, um, ideas about controlling time from, with, from the way you look at the viewpoints and your viewpoint changes panel to panel. That's technical stuff, I suppose. No, we'll be um, getting to that in a minute. Yeah, definitely. yeah. yeah. Uh, Brenda McCarthy was a big influence around okay. that time as well. Um, the sooner or later strip that he casually drew on the back of each 2000 AD, I thought it was absolutely mind-blowing stuff at the yeah. time. Oh, it really was. Um, and it tends to be people like that who don't t- tend to have a, an actual comic style so much as they're just drawing. Yeah. Um, it's something I like about uh, Goran Parlov's work, actually, like that as well. Oh, I love that his stuff. That work he did brilliant. on Starlight was amazing. His punish is great as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's effortless stuff as well. It's effortless. I mean, that, I mean, the trick there that is, it looks effortless. Right. You're just forgetting <laughs> about the years it took to get to that yeah. point to make it look effortless. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the thing. I, it's, it should never look like you're feeling the work on the page. It should look like it just lives there. Mm. It always yeah. lived there and it's always moving. I mean, that's the great thing about Chris Samuel's yeah, stuff. Absolutely. It's very comic but it has that amazing fluidity. Yeah, and it really mm. Not just in, yeah, well. in the panels, but panel to panel as well. Um, who else? I don't know. There's, there's probably loads, there's loads of people. Yeah, they can't, really yeah that's fine. Yeah. So, so moving on to the sort of craft of things. You, let's start with you, Christian, because you're the newest of the group. You see what I mean? Oh, no. <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and so, <laughs> so you get a... Um, you get a pay because you're all right. You're all artists working often off writer scripts, aren't you? Yeah. So you get a script through. Yeah. What's the process? What's the first thing you look for, and where do you take it from there? Um, I mean, I always draw faces first out of anything. So it's right. kind of like I don't know. I use just like from doing a figure, and I, when I read the script, I usually kind of just 
think of like a good angle in my head, I guess, of like different waves, like the cinematic view of right. like that kind of situation. And then just plot it out basics, like really just rough basics in the script sometimes if like there's a sp certain big thing that I want to You don't get. ever get excited about the first page you read and just throw yourself into that page without planning the rest of the issue? No, I, I have to plan the whole thing before right. I start it. It's, okay. I think you don't do that, do you? You kind of do page by page. Yeah, Mark, what do you do? Am I, um, I don't know. I have to plan everything, but I tend to do it in chunks of eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just because it fits on a sheet of A4. <laughs> yeah. So what, what, what I start with are uh, tiny little thumbnails on, on post-it notes, which I then do a slightly bigger version of on a cheap A4 paper, scan those in, and then use those as my pencils. Yeah, because we've been in your dustbin. Yeah. We've stolen <laughs> them out of your dustbin, those. Yeah. yeah, that's fine. Yeah, cool. So you, what do you look for in a script, though? What is it you really excites you about a script when you see read through it? The last page. The last page. <laughs> <laughs> I knew they would say that on yeah, the page. The, the paycheck. I knew the that check. was coming. Yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, you know, something that's challenging you. Um, anything that comes up as a, a problem is always the most interesting page at the end of it. The one that drives you mad is the one that you normally enjoy most at the end of it. Because um, co comics is nothing but a, a problem-solving thing from beginning to end. You, yeah, you, definitely. You've, you've got to make sure it reads right and the timing's right. Um, and it's often, you know, finding out things like what's going to be the biggest panel on the page, what's the important moment. Do you guys it's like an impossible jigsaw sort of thing. Isn't yeah, it? Ab yeah, absolutely. Do you guys yeah. draw in order of pa like page one to the last page, or do you like skip around yes. it all? Yeah, know. I always go. I always go through from from beginning to end. Yeah. Um, it's very rare I'll ink anything out of order, even. Yeah. I mean, I'm tempted every now and then to. I've drawn a, I, 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 I've drawn a nice figure on a page, and I'm really tempted yeah. to go in and draw that, but yeah, I won't yeah. because. I, that's the thing I'll enjoy. Yeah. And right. it means that it goes through all that grind to get to that one figure. Yeah. That's your reward then. If yeah. you've blown it on that one figure, <laughs> then you've got the misery of the rest of it. <laughs> I don't want to put anybody off drawing comics or anything. <laughs> but Mark was on the button when he said it's problem solving. Yeah. And, 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 the, and I, was, I was telling somebody this earlier, in fact, um, that process of doing the thumbnails, doing all your little layouts, trying solving the problems of how to make that story flow, how to make, get the emotions across, um, hit the high points, hit the low points, make it flow. Mm. Um, you've got to put a mark down on the page. Some, uh, you've got to, it, the, the weirdest thing about comics is, it's all, of, it's, you can't think of it. You've got to think of it simultaneously as a complete object and a fragmentary thing. Mm. It's separate parts, aren't separate parts, they're all interrelated, but you've got to start somewhere. Um, I find I can't solve those problems unless I solve them in order to know that you've got a sense yeah. of trajectory right. from the first page to the last page and sometimes even thinking of what, what issue went before as well. So you've got to feel the energy almost all the way. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, exactly definitely. it. There's a through line, even yeah. if it's not visible. And even when you're drawing one page, you're still thinking about the, pe the last panel or panels mm. of that sequence that went on the page before. So it's... Ho it's if you stop and try and, th I mean, I'm sure you've done this before, you stop and try and hold it all in your head at one time, and it, it's kind of like no. a, a something's broken. <laughs> yeah. um, you've yeah. got to hold all these moments, though, mentally, yeah. uh, and it, it, especially if they don't even exist yet. I and mean, here's the thing, I mean, you're doing, that's where you're doing the job. It's like if you break it down in terms of a film. Uh, you've got a cinematography, you've got a set designer, you've got a uh, costume, designer. costume designer, lighting, yeah, whatever. Um, oh, plus as actors doing stuff. Um, <laughs> if you're an editor, your job then is to take all the pieces of film and put them in some order to make sense of it. As a complicated job as it is, because you'll have many, many takes from different angles, uh, alternate takes, um, and there are numerous ways you can put it together. Um, putting it together in the wrong order can sometimes have a more interesting effect. The thing about the comic is you're doing that but you've got to hold it all in your head before you even draw it as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you've got all these multiple options. I mean, I'm working out um, a new Hellboy book at the moment, and it's not even actually late. It's the first time I mean, Mike's hand me a script, and the script's for a 50-page book, right. and it's eight pages of type. Right. Oh, that um, 
Uh, well, I, I've never done this before. I mean, this is a bit of a weird one. So I'm lit- I am literally starting... I'm, I'm doing the thing I wouldn't normally do, and I've actually just started drawing it out. Page one. I mean, only thumbnails. Um, I'm just telling the story how it feels right from, from his guide. And I'm pretty sure that I'm going to get so far and realise I've got 30 pages still to fill. Right. <laughs> At which point, I'm going to have to go back and somehow break down what I've done without interrupting the flow of anything that's already there and insert extra story beats. Um, and the weird thing is, even though I've not got to the end of it, um, I'm already mentally doing that. I'm already mentally making mm. breaks. I'm, it's, it's turning out really nicely, actually. Oh, it is. Cool. It's really interesting. Well, that was the one thing I was going to ask. You, you've got the finished product. Like you say, you've reached the last page. You've drawn it. Do you go back and redraw anything? Do you go back and review it these days? Um, I'm all, whenever I've penciled, if I've fully penciled something, I'll, I'll be redrawing it as I ink it anyway. Right, okay. I have done right. alternate takes yeah. where I'll drop in new panels from time to time. It's not easy doing it digitally, it has to be said. Yeah. Um, sometimes I draw, and it's a problem when it's a sequence. This is that problem where you can't always just replace one panel. Yeah, so, sometimes, you get, sometimes you get to the end of a three page sequence and realize what you've done on the first page just doesn't work. And the yeah. great thing about digital is you can now go, sod it. Yeah. You know, I've mm. still got this and I can spend half an hour reworking this. And if that's better, brilliant. Yeah, your yeah. real problem when you get to that stage is if you've realized that first panel doesn't work, but it has a, you change that and realize it, the flow doesn't work with any of the rest of it yeah. as well. Mm. And that comes down to how much time you've got left. Yes. What about you, Chris? Do you ever go back and re, I mean, I've seen your pages like mental. Do you ever go back and redraw <laughs> any of them? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. You mentally ill, firstly. Yeah, well, yeah. I usually have to fight my editor to let right. me kind of go back and go over stuff. But the, for me, it's always faces. Like, okay. there's always just some bog eyed person that I've drawn. Is on that one the page. photograph I sent you that time? Yeah. Late at night? Yeah, I get you. Yeah, of your yeah, mum. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no. The, like, with, uh, say, we did our 12 page preview of Briar. Yeah. There's, I think there's one or two panels of that I've redrawn since then. Or. Just if I can, if I can get away with it, I usually have to ask my editor, can I redraw that? Really? Cause okay. Because you're sending pages off as you do them, you mean? Yeah, I usually yeah. send them off in a big bunch. And right, then, okay. Yeah. 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 Brilliant. Uh, um, yeah. We're a bit, we're only on a half hour and we're almost run over. Is it, do you, anyone in the audience got a question they'd like to ask? Here we go, at the front end. Hi. Um, hey. If you could draw any established character you've never drawn before in a main run, uh, who would you choose? Good question. What, who, who would we draw? An, estab- an established character from a run, who would you draw? Oh, man. I'd really like to draw Abe Sapien. I think Abe Sapien would be a really fun one to draw because I've never actually drawn him before either, like right. ever. Yeah, I can I see your style working there. Yeah, that'd be fun, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah, Abe, someone like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mark? I'm really jealous that I'm not drawing Power Man and Iron Fist at the moment. That I really <laughs> want to draw. <laughs> Duncan? Um, there's not, honestly, there's not anybody. I mean, the one character I would have wanted to draw, I've drawn. Right. And that's Hellboy, so. Okay. And, I mean, when I was a kid, I really wanted to draw Spider Man. I mean, the one brief experience I had of drawing Spider Man, I found the actual Spider Man character an absolute nightmare to draw. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> screw that. Um, <laughs> And I, enjoy, I mean, I, I, I did an issue with the Hulk and the thing in it, and, I, and that was enough for me, but one issue, that was fun, drawing the thing. It's a nightmare. Is that because of the webbing? Oh, it's that? just, yeah, webbing or the bloody rocks. Or the, rocks <laughs> the rocks on the thing take yeah. yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. It's like um, the face times ten. <laughs> I drew a couple of episodes of Judge Dredd, which, again, I would have loved to have drawn as a kid. No. His helmet. I can There's never... a theme. There's a theme here. Yeah. Yeah. All, all those characters, all the cool Duke hickeys all over them. They're a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> and in fact, I have to say, Hellboy's belt. It's a yeah. nightmare. Oh, yeah. I had yeah. to give him two bloody belts. Sorry, family <laughs> audience. Okay. Um, we'll get you on a silver surface series. That'll be fine. Yeah. It's got all those exposed, bo- exposed metallic muscles. That's a nightmare. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> any more? It's any all more just quick. drawing. Yeah. Casper the Friendly Ghost. Casper the Friendly Ghost. Oh, yeah, good one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah but I'd end up doing the, 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 the realistic alcoholic years or something. And it'd be, <laughs> I'd read that. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. Yeah. No. <laughs> oh, my God, that's my life. <laughs> yeah. Any more questions in the audience? Any? There you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> Hello. Um, is there anything you particularly like to draw, like buildings or people or? Is that like or dislike? Uh, like. 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 Yeah. Love drawing people. Hate drawing cars. Cars okay. can go themselves. <laughs> <laughs> cars are like horses. Far too hard. I can't ride either. <laughs> Actually, I'd rather draw horses than cars. Right, okay, Mark? What do I like doing? Um, I suppose it, it's mostly faces and body language. That's the real fun stuff, the acting. It is. You know, everything else is knitting, mm. really. Cool. Can't knit either. <laughs> Christian. Uh, right, I'm going to really sound really weird say this, but like, I really like drawing children. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, re it's on record now. Shut up, Tony. He's, he's on the index already. You're registered, aren't you? But, yeah, it's fine. Yeah. 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 No, like kids, yeah. but I mean kids and hair. That sounds weird no, again. No, 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 no. But, like, it's not going to be better. <laughs> but like long hair, I literally like inking long hair. I knew hair. that was what it was about me. I knew. I, I yeah, totally yeah, get yeah. what you mean about drawing kids, actually. I mean, it's. I, I did um, uh, the last Hellboy book I drew was um, a young Hellboy story, and that was great fun. Mm. I mean, although he's not got a kid's face, I'm trying to try, try to give it that whole feeling of, I know, excitable little child, like more, probably a bit more like a terrier the way I was drawing, with all, yeah. all excitable. But it was it was really good fun, and it made such a change from drawing depressed Hellboy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, cool. I liked his baggy clothing as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So glad he backed me up on that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never letting you forget that answer ever. No, so I you know. know. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right, any more from the audience? Okay, one more. There we go. Time for one more. Hi. Uh, what's your favourite traditional media to use, if you have one? Cintiq. <laughs> traditional. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's made on the same planet as the pencils and pens I use. <laughs> Um, I like brush pen. Yeah. Just brush and ink for me. Yeah, brush very, and ink. Very happy yeah. with a nice safe brush. Yeah, brush and ink all the way. Have okay. you got any unusual tools? Something that you wouldn't expect to be a tool? Some people have talked about uh, what is going on brushes. Like like and, oh, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> Apart from you, Mark, we know what you use. <laughs> but have you got any uh, uh, things that you, you wouldn't associate normally as a, as a painting instrument, like a toothbrush people talk about, or that you Penis? actually use, Mark? I see that. <laughs> 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 Duncan, you He's, off. He's off. I do oh, use God. a toothbrush every now and then in my work. Yes, again, I, I will use a ratty old toothbrush every so often. Oh, and I've got a Barbie doll. Um, a Barbie I've, doll. I've had a, I used to have an action man, but he's um, it, with realistic hair, but uh, that alopecia set in. And um, <laughs> fatigue in his gripping hands as well. So his gripping hands became non-gripping stumps. Um, but he donated his shirt, and it lives on, on Barbie, active Barbie who has also had a haircut recently. Um, she's really useful. I can just imagine you just sitting at home just snipping the hair yeah, Whilst talking to her. I like, you like a haircut? I like it, yeah. We don't discuss these <laughs> things. Don't, don't have have this year. She's the posed for me a few comments. times, though. She's very useful for lighting solutions with this baggy shirt. She. Cool. I only like baggy clothing. <laughs> so it went from kung fu grip to arthritis grip. Was that it? It's lost all this hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, we're getting near the end here. Cool. So, right. <laughs> we, we've been forced off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just before we go, just if you just wanted to say what you've had out recently, what's available to buy, and if you can talk about it, what you've got coming out soon. Duncan? Um, last stuff I had published was ages ago now, uh, and that was MPH, and you should all rush out and buy it if you didn't, because not enough people did. Um, it's very good. Very Even good, yeah. though it's written by Mark Miller, it's it very, very good. good. <laughs> um, and uh, it's, it's some of the most sensitive material he's done. And what I've got coming out is, well, nothing coming out immediately apart from a bunch of covers and prints, which you can buy at my store. Um, I'm doing more Hellboy. Cool. Yay. Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Mark? Um, I've just recently finished up um, for the whole Secret Wars event, Planet Hulk. Hey. And just done an uncanny Avengers annual, which will feed into the new Scarlet Witch um, series that James Robinson's writing. Cool. Um, and um, what else have I got coming up? I'm doing covers on all of the um, the new Green Hornet series and some Assassin's Creed covers. 
and something else I can't talk about. You want to get on, mate. You're not, you need to do more, yeah, I think. He's not very busy yeah, at all. He's not busy yeah. enough. Yeah. Tell who the slacker is here, can't <laughs> yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll be me. Do you want to know what games I've played? <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't, know, we, we don't know what games he's played. What about you, Christian? <laughs> um, I've just finished, well, j- uh, next month, uh, Bone China, the Secret Brilliant. of Porcelain's coming out. Uh, just done an issue, like a backup piece for Phonogram that just came out in the latest issue. And you should definitely run out and buy that. Christian's work's excellent. Isn't yeah, it? and Briar's upstairs. you got Briar. Yeah, and Briar, Briar here, that's my newest book that just came out last week. Uh, and that came out as well. And then I've got a book coming out next year, but that's not announced yet or oh. anything. But it's like my first mainstream thing, so... Oh no, looking forward Bad to that. time. Bad time, mate. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just like to thank the guests, Mark Lamming, Duncan Vergredo, and Christian Wildgoose. Round of applause. Thank you. Thanks. Geek <laughs> <laughs> to the past without.